So, so Hili, you received this uh, Press Freedom Award. It's a very uh, prestigious award. Uh, how do you feel about it? What it means for you and for Ukrainian journalists? It's a recognition of all journalists that cover the terrible war. And uh, it's also a recognition of work of my colleagues, I mean, journalists of Ukrainska Pravda, uh, because we work literally 24-7 from the start of this war. And I think it's also a recognition of all the independent journalism uh, that uh, one of the greatest achievements of our country for the last 30 years of independence. Mm -hmm. How uh, the war affected your work uh, in terms of coverage and in, in terms of dif difficulties that you incur during this time? Of course, it has changed dramatically. I can tell you that before this war, of course, we focused more on the domestic issues. We covered uh, politics, we covered uh, um, corruption, we did a lot of investigation about um, high-level officials, for example. Uh, we covered also reforms. And it has changed dramatically because 90% of our coverage now is about uh, war and uh, coverage from frontline. And um, even uh, when we publish some political uh, stories, uh, it, some of those stories irritate people because they think it's not a good timing uh, for such coverage, maybe. Uh, so, but, but still, we do our best um, not only to cover this war, but also cover misconducts of uh, high officials, even in time of war. Um. Ukrainska Pravda is uh, one of the top publications in Ukraine and famous for investigative journalism. Now, how are you seeing um, this investigative journalism moving forward uh, during the war and after, probably after the war, since Ukrainian officials are now used to not uh, being challenged by journalists uh, during the time of war? Yes, it's absolutely right. And uh, you know that a lot of, for example, other investigative projects in Ukraine, um, now they focus more on war crimes. They covered uh, the war crimes that Russia uh, does uh, in Ukraine. And uh, our team also published a lot of stories about Russian oligarchs and uh, the yachts and jets. And we also covered a story about uh, Ramzan Kadyrov villas in Dubai. So um, we did the same. But now we decided that we have to move forward with our investigation department, I mean um, domestic poli uh, politics, and um, last uh, week, for example, we published one of the investigation about misconduct of uh, one of high-level officials in uh, Dnipro uh, city. Unfortunately, it, it was not, not reaction, but we think that it will change, because um, I had this discussion with my colleagues, it will be even more terrible that after war, we will understand that a lot of misconducts took place and uh, a lot of corruption took place. Um, do you think that uh, Ukrainian officials today understand the role of journalism and how and society understand the role of journalism? And is the role of journalism changing during the war? Of course it's changing. Uh, and I remember how I went to territories that were under Russian occupation and I met a lot of uh, people and they were literally crying when they understood that I'm a journalist because uh, they told me that the hardest part during the occupation was not even being out of food, without food, without electricity, without uh, water, the main challenge, and uh, it was really difficult to be out of news all the time. Um, so, and I remember how in the first days of invasion, I received a call from one of my colleagues uh, in Mariupol, it was 28th of February, and he was literally crying, uh, and uh, because he, he believed that uh, Kiev was, is already surrendered, because Russia spread this information that Mariupol, in Mariupol, when they uh, occupied the city, uh, so and the, the attacks uh, took place. So what Russia did first in occupied territories, territories when they occupied the city, they blocked down all Ukrainian uh, websites, they blocked down Ukrainian information. And uh, they even prosecuted like people who still uh, read Ukrainian news, and um, I had such stories. But at the same time, I think authorities uh, changed um, the understanding of uh, media during the war. They think that we cover and uh, they can use us as, as they want to, and I think it's a big, big mistake. Um, we understand a lot of restriction uh, during the war, for example, restriction not to publish uh, the place after a missile attack. Um, uh, we have some restrictions, for example, that took place in the beginning of September before con contraoffensive. Um, 
it's okay. But some of uh, restrictions also can be a manipulation, um, just not to cover um, sensitive topics for Ukrainian government and corruption as well. But we'll take care about it. And um, I think that, uh, yeah, journalism will fight back all this um, territory that may be now um, under not controlling us, uh, not under our you, control. You touched upon the uh, environment, media environment in Ukraine. And um, uh, what kind of challenges, uh, hopes and, and fears you have uh, for the future of uh, media and journalism in Ukraine? The main one is emotional pressure. The second one is financial pressure. Uh, because, for example, a business model of Ukrainska Pravda was terribly destroyed by this war. And now we depend on from uh, donors and from our readers and uh, readership model. Um, but I hope that something will change in the nearest future. And, uh, of course, I also understand that there is a definition, um, the fog of war, uh, where, um, like, uh, you can tell you, uh, you, you can understand the real situation in the front line, and the same uh, I can tell about the real situation in the country, when everyone is so much focused on the war, and you can um, miss uh, some important events or um, important uh, stories as well. So those challenges, um, I think that they will be basic and they will be very important for Ukrainian journalists as well. And of course, I think that um, we can, fa we will probably, we, we can face with uh, um, efforts uh, in censorship, unfortunately, uh, because it's war and because officials say that during the war you can tell the whole truth and uh, they want to control the informational field uh, at the same time. And, uh, but, but I uh, strongly believe that uh, Ukrainian journalists will fight back because we experienced it before, we experienced it during uh, years and years. And um, one of the main values of Ukrainian democratic state uh, is freedom of speech. You, you're a young journalist, however, you went through a lot during the history of Ukraine and you went through Ukrainian revolution and dignity and all the uh, terrible censorship during Yanukovych time and uh, uh, now war. Um, how are you personally, emotionally, and physically holding up? <laughs> and uh, I know you cry. Uh, I know you have to face a lot of uh, terrible things that, that is going on in, uh, in front of your eyes and cover it. And then you're Crimean Tatar, you lost your home, uh, not once. How are you personally holding up? Uh, it's difficult, of course, um, and uh, at the same time when I see people in occupied territories uh, and when I see Ukrainian army and among uh, those Ukrainian, this Ukrainian army, a lot of uh, former journalists, for example, former um, artists, um, I think, I, I understand that I don't have a time for self-reflection maybe or um, and um, maybe in future <laughs> I will have a time. I hope so. Uh, and what uh, gives me hope? Um, I have a dream. I know that it will happen one day. Ukraine will be free and my native Crimea will be free. Uh, and um, I will sit uh, near the Black Sea together with my children and my husband uh, in uh, my native place. And uh, I literally believe that. And it's this, this one uh, picture gives me hope um, that um, one day it will happen. I'm 100% sure because the, the story of my family um, already was like that uh, 30 years ago when we came uh, to Ukraine. Unfortunately, I wasn't, I wasn't born in Ukraine. I uh, was born in Uzbekistan in uh, deportation, um, but I have this connection with uh, this uh, with this country, with my native Crimea, and um, I understand that. Yeah, we will be free, and we of course we pay every single day a huge price for this freedom and uh, for democracy and for European path of Ukraine, um, and um, but. At the same time, it gives me hope. Slava Ukraini. Hurray, Slava.